I feel really bad about this, but it's time I came clean. I lied to you guys. Hey everyone, my name is Dee, and in this art video, I'm going to be redrawing some of my childhood art from 17 years ago. Wow, it hurts more to say out loud than I thought it would. But before we get into that, we hit 1,000 subscribers! Ah, so excited! Thank you guys so much to everyone who subscribed. I'm planning a very special event for the future, so keep your eyes open for that. And yeah, thanks again! Now you may be wondering, Dee, what, what did you write to us about? Well, remember Rosie? And how I said that Rosie was my first ever OC, or original character? I honestly thought she was, and that's because I forgot about this lady. This sketchbook is from 2005 to 2006 era, so I was 14 to 16 when I drew these. My first actual original character is named Mandy. Today I'm going to be redrawing Mandy in her smart style, and I drew this when I was 14. I'll be doing two illustrations of Mandy, one full body drawing so we can get a better look at her magnificent outfit, and the other will be an up close drawing with a bit of scenery. So for the full body illustration, I didn't want to stray too much from the original drawing, so I tweaked the pose so she's standing slightly turned and not facing the viewer dead on. It was really interesting going back over the details of this drawing as I redrew it because the color choices are not something I choose today, especially the blue and orange striped backpack. I'm not sure what my thought process with that, but it doesn't look too cute with her outfit. And speaking of her outfit, I'm not sure what I was thinking there either. Uh, this is not something I would have worn in high school, and the smart kids in my class didn't dress like this. So, I don't know. It must just be what I thought a smart style looked like. Maybe I could redraw her again in the future with an updated style. Let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see that. So it's basically a pink long sleeve shirt with a white scalloped collar and a plaid-ish green and pink skirt. I gave her simple tall brown boots that would somewhat go with her outfit. You can tell in my original drawing I had no idea about the curvature of the body or clothing and so that explains these straight slash zigzag lines on the skirt. Uh, the colors are pretty pastel-y, and that could have been an artistic decision on my part, but more likely my supplies were lacking in pigment. Guess, Guess we'll, we'll never know. know. You might also notice that there are no hands or feet in the original, and that is a recurring theme in most of the art in this sketchbook, albeit but a few drawings where I actually did draw the hands. Ben said she looks like a Minecraft villager in this pose. <laughs> and now for the close-up. I'm really excited for this one because I took a reference photo of my actual desk with some props, and I love how the photo turned out so much. So my idea was that she's sitting at her desk, maybe doing some studying because she's smart, because in the original drawing she's holding papers with her grades on them, facing out for everyone to see. A little braggy, but okay. Those unfortunately were not my grades in school. <laughs> Normally I don't do any ink lines or dark line art, but I thought this time I'd add in some lines, just where some of the darkest shadows would be and along some of the features, just to make sure I don't lose any of my line art once I put some color down. That happens to me quite a bit. I'll have the perfect nose drawn, and then it just disappears the moment I put some color down. The original drawing lacks some details, so I just had to fill them in with what I thought 14 year old me was thinking at the time. Like, her glasses are round, and they kind of look like wire-rimmed glasses, but I don't think that's what I was going for, so I made them dark gray with oval frames. And her hair looked like it was colored in with a regular pencil, so I gave her brown hair because I think that's what I was going for. She's looking so cute already! Maybe I should just stop here. I'm using Ohuhu markers, which I really like, but they do feather out quite a bit, and so you have to be careful how close to your line art you use them, otherwise they'll trickle right over it. Since she's basically paper white in my drawings, I gave her a light skin tone. I used two colors for her skin base. They were Warm Gray Zero and Pale Cherry Pink, with the pink being in the shaded areas and the warm gray being in the more open highlighted areas. I'll go over most everything with colored pencils later. I also do this weird little flick motion with the marker almost every time after I make a mark. I don't even realize I'm doing it until I'm editing. You have no idea how annoying it is to edit all those out. Sometimes I do it multiple times in between strokes. So here's a montage of just the flicks. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Here I realized I forgot to add the details of this lower hand, so let me just do that real quick. I was loving how the skin was looking at this point with just the simple marker base. I thought it looked really bright and beautiful. And next to fill in was the hair, and I started with lighter colors so I can build up to darker colors. Like I said, her hair is going to be brown, and the beginning layers make it look more orange, but it's starting to look more brown as I add the darker shades. 
It's also a bit hard to tell what exactly the hairstyle was in the original image, but I'm guessing it was like a half up, half down look, since that was pretty popular when I was in high school. I actually had quite a hard time conveying this style in my sketch because it just looks like her hair is in a ponytail, so let me know in the comments, does it come across as a half down look or does it look like a full ponytail? I made sure that her shirt stayed slightly lighter through the lenses. I colored the, in the shirt in those areas normally and then went over them with a colorless blender and that lifted the pink just enough so it looks like there's some transparency in the lenses. Another detail I thought was really interesting were the necklaces. There's one that has an 05 which makes it seem like she graduated in 05 even though I graduated in 2008 but I drew this in 2005 so that's probably why I did that. And the necklace on top of it looks like it could have been pearls, but knowing me at 14 and the jewelry I enjoyed at the time, it was more likely to be a plain silver chain. Pearls would have looked cute with this top though, I think. Here is our first actual bit of contrast in this piece, and I'm actually quite pleased with how her glasses turned out. They're not perfect, but I think I did okay on the perspective, how she's holding them slightly tilted. I did use a reference photo of myself holding some glasses so I could get the hand pose and the perspective just right. This is the part I was the most nervous but also the most excited for. I really just love how the reference photo turned out, so I was determined to do my best and make it look at least decent. I have these two little succulent plants on my desk. They're both fake, but one is a tiny little white hedgehog and I just love them so much because they're so tiny and cute. The bottom book is a giant math textbook that my granny gave to us when Ben started kindergarten. She just loves to give. <laughs> but I thought it was perfect for this scene. And the smaller notebook is one I just recently bought to log Ben's homeschool lessons this year and of course next to that is my laptop. I thought it was really fun figuring out which colors to use to try and emulate the reference photo. The one thing I did change was the light source. In the photo I had some studio light set up from the front, but in the drawing I went with a more basic above light source. Fancy lighting effects is something I really love in art, but for this piece I wanted mainly to focus on creating contrast and getting everything to look like it's meant to be together in the environment. The laptop was probably my least favorite part to draw because of all the straight lines. Those were so hard to keep perfectly straight. But I decided that I still like the way it looks in the end. I think some wobbly lines gives it more of that hand-drawn look, even though all of my art is hand-drawn. I heard that from Lavender Town recently and just loved it. My desk is a dark brown, but I have a decal on top that's brighter, so it's like a cream color with a gold, pink, purple marbling effect. So I tried to give the desk that look in the drawing as well. I had to draw in the patterns on the curtains because apparently I also forgot to add that in my sketch. I tried to imitate the pattern of my actual curtains, but they're quite detailed so I did a simplified version. After all, they're in the background, we can't have the curtains stealing the show. That's something I did struggle with. I wanted the foreground to stand out from the background, but because she's sitting up against a wall, well actually they're windows. But if she had been sitting in the middle of the room, maybe making the background more separate would have been easier. But she's sitting right up against them and really they have almost just as much light as the desk does, plus the light shining through from the windows. Here's how she looks so far with just a marker base down, but don't leave yet because I plan on using colored pencils and fine liners now for some shading and details. But I loved it so much as it was. It looks so light and airy and pretty. I was so nervous I'd mess it up and wouldn't like it. But I actually love how it turned out with the pencils, so stick around to see the before and after. I had a lot of fun adding the details to the books and desk items. However, the laptop was the bane of my existence and I'm looking forward to never drawing a keyboard again. Next was adding shading to the hair. I added dark brown pencils to emphasize the roundness of the bangs. Uh, in the original drawing, she does have some bangs, but they're pretty sad, and I'm pretty sure these type of bangs are what I was envisioning, so yeah, that's what I'm going with. I tried not to overdo it on the skin because I find that with lighter skin, it's harder for me at least to get away with too many layers of pencils before it starts looking darker than I want it to, or it gets muddy. I wanted her face to be the focal point, so keeping it nice and bright will help a lot. Like I said before, I already really liked how her skin looked with just the two color marker base, so the colored pencils really just add a hint of polish. Same thing with the top. It's a plain long sleeve t-shirt, so I didn't want to make it too complicated. Just some simple shading and it looks pretty nice. 
the desk things were the most fun once again. I don't normally or ever really draw environments or scenery, but I had a lot of fun taking this reference photo because it got me excited to draw it, and then I had a lot of fun drawing it. So I think maybe trying to take more of my own reference photos instead of endlessly searching the internet for specific references could be a good idea. Even though it took me a long time to figure out a setup I finally liked, it was totally worth it to me. Besides the initial bit of inking, I tried to aim for more of a lineless style because I really liked the look of that, but I did feel the need to add some outlines to certain areas because they began to blend in with the areas around them. I think with more practice I'll learn to be more careful when coloring to keep things separate. So earlier in the video I mentioned that I drew this character Mandy when I was 14 and I drew her in several different styles. <laughs> We have Mandy's smart style, which is this one. We also have Mandy's school dance style, Mandy's preppy style, Mandy's party style, and Mandy's casual in love style. I'd love for you all in the comments to let me know if you'd like me to redraw any of these and which of Mandy's styles should I redraw next. I think it's interesting that I drew this one character in so many styles, and when I try to think of the reason, I feel like it's probably because when I was in high school, I wasn't part of any one crowd. Like, I was a cheerleader, I was in the band, I had friends from all different groups. I don't know what high school environments are like nowadays, but back in my day, there were definitely cliques. <laughs> there were definitely cliques or people who hung out with people like themselves, which I'm sure is still common, but I think because I was friends with people from several different types of groups, I manifested that into Mandy. Her styles are all pretty similar, but my thought was, since I specifically named each illustration Mandy's blank style, each was a different version of Mandy and not just Mandy in different outfits, if that makes sense. Maybe it's not that deep, I was only 14 at the time, so who knows what I was really thinking. <laughs> And here are the final drawings. You guys, I love the close-up ones so much. I can't help but feel like there could have been a bit more contrast, but overall I really like it. It's probably my favorite art piece I've made to date, and that's a pretty good feeling. <laughs> but what do you all think? Let me know down in the comments which version do you like more, the original or the new, and be sure to let me know which of Mandy's styles you'd like to see me redraw next. Thanks so much for watching. Bye! but has several different, if that makes sense, if that makes sense, and not just Mandy in different outfits, if that makes sense. If that makes sense. <clears throat> oh. oh, hold on, let me turn the fan off. Ugh. Stay there. Well, you're gonna start not in the curtain, so. What? <laughs> Enjoying yourself? Where are you gonna be at? Yeah, try to keep as much of yourself covered though as you can. So try to have just your arms coming out. Can you try that? <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, but now I'm embarrassed because I'm gonna be smiling because you're gonna be standing here while I'm reading my script. Okay. I'm embarrassed too. I got one take, so I gotta go. Okay, so <laughs> I'm embarrassed now. I'm shy. Okay. After all, they're in the background, so we can't have the curtains still in the show. Okay, now you're going to get back there. And then do a little curtain wiggle. Okay, go ahead. Oh, you got to make the noise! Oh. <laughs> okay, go. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I wasn't recording. I'm just kidding. I got it. Thank you. Love you. Oh,